Well, this is Devotions with Pastor Kent. We're continuing our series on Genesis, and we're looking at Genesis 3 today. Um, Say a word of prayer. Abba, may I say and do what you want me to do, and go where you want me to go, and say these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now the serpent was more crafty than any wild animal which Adonai, El, had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you have not to eat of the tree in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We are not to eat from the trees of the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. We are not to neither eat of it, nor either touch it, or ye will die. Now, that is not what Al said. He said, you are not to partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The serpent said to the woman, It is not true that you should surely die, because God knows that on the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like a god, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it had a pleasing appearance, and that the tree was desirable for making one wise, she took some of the fruit and ate. <coughs> she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. They heard the voice of Adonai El walking in the garden in the evening breeze. So the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Adonai among the trees in the garden. Adonai called to the man, Where are you? He answered. Adam answered, I heard your voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Now, do you for one single solitary second now think that Adonai did not know what Adam was going to say? Do you think that he had to ans ask that question? You know, um, where are you? He already knew where they were. Okay, so don't be naive, okay? Because El said right away, see, he knew, have you eaten from the tree from which I ordered you or commanded you not to eat? The man replied. Thus comes the first lie in the Bible. The woman gave me and I did eat from the fruit of the tree. And I ate. Adonai said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me, fooled me, beguiled me, whatever you want to say there. And so I ate. Adonai said, to the servant, probably with an angry voice, you know, 
probably very upset and ticked off because you have done this. You are cursed more than all livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. So he took his legs away and eat of the dust as long as you live. And I will put amnesty between you and the woman and between your descendant and her descendant. He will rise, bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. This is a precursor to the Messiah who is to come in the New Testament. To the woman he said, I will greatly in peace increase thy pain in childbirth. You will bring forth children in pain. Your desire will be toward your husband, and he will rule over you. See, he gave her punishment or consequence, but it's not too severe because I'm not a woman, but I've been told that after you have childbirth, that that pain goes away. As soon as you hold that baby in your arm, the pain is gone. To Adam, he said, this is a stern talking to because you listened to what your wife said and ate from the tree that which I gave you the command you are not to eat from it the ground is cursed on your account this is where he created rain and how he intended on water in the ground. So now the ground doesn't water itself anymore. You will work hard and eat from it all as long as you live. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, thus weeding, and you will eat sealed plants. You will eat bread by the sweat of your forehead till you returned to the ground. From you were taken out of it, you are dust, and you will return to dust. The man called his wife Heva, because she was the mother of the living. Adonai made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Adonai said, See the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now to prevent this putting out his head, his hand, and taking all, taking also from the tree of life, eating and living forever. Therefore Adonai set him out of the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and he placed at the east gate of Eden a cherim and a flaming sword which turned in every direction to the ground the way to guard the way to the tree of life. May God add the reading of his word. Now we're going to look at the commentary by Matthew Henry. I like his the best because it's a lot of how I believe. 
The serpent deceives Eve in verses 1 to 5. Adam and Eve transgress and divine command and fall into sin and misery, verses 6 to 8. God calls upon Adam and Eve to the answer in verses 9 to 13. The serpent cursed. The promised seed. The punishment of mankind, verses 16 to 19. The first clothing of mankind, Adam and Eve, are driven from paradise. Verses 1 to 5. Satan assaulted our first parents to draw them into sin and temptation, provide fate to them. The tempter was the devil in the shape of a likeness of a servant, serpent or snake. Satan's plan was to draw the first parents to sin, so to separate between them and God. Thus the devil was from the beginning a murderer and a great mischief maker. The person tempted was the woman. It was Satan's policy to enter into talk with her and she was alone. There was many temptations of which being long gives great advantage. <coughs> but the communion of sins trends very much to their strength and safety. Satan took advantage of finding her near the forbidden tree that would not eat the forbidden fruit. See, Satan knew it. Most not come near the forbidden tree. Satan tempted Eve that by her might tempt Adam. It is the policy of the temptations by hands we do not separate suspect and those that have most influence upon us. Satan questioned whether it were a sin or not to eat of the tree. He did not disclose his design at first, but he put the question with seemed innocent. Those who would save need the shy of talking with the tempter. He quoted the commandment wrong. He spoke in a taunting way. The devil is a liar, so he is a scoffer. From the beginning, and scoffed after his children. It is the craft of Satan to speak of the divine law as uncertain or unresponsible, and so to draw people from sin. It is our wisdom to keep up a firm belief of God's command and a high respect for it. Has God said, Ye shall not lie, nor take his name in vain, nor be drunk? Yes, I am sure he has high respect for it. And has it as well as said, By his grace I will abide by it. It is Eve's weakness to enter into talk with the serpent she might have preserved by his question that he had no good intention and desire so should therefore have started back Satan teaches men the first to doubt and then to deny he promises advantage from their eating this fruit he aims to make time disconnected with their present state and if it were not so good as it might be and should be 
no condition will itself bring content unless the mind is brought to it he tempts them to seek profanement as if they were fit to be gods Satan ruined himself by desiring to be like the Most High therefore he sought to intent our first parents with the same desire and he might ruin them too and still the devil draws people into his interests by suggesting to them hard thoughts of God and false hopes and advantages of sin let us therefore always think well of God as a best good and think ill of Satan the worst evil thus let us resist the devil and will flee from us verses 6 to 8 the steps to the transgression not steps upward but downward toward a pit one he saw a great deal of sin comes in the eye let us not look at which we were danger of lasting after second she took it was her own act and deed Satan may tempt but he cannot force my pursued us to cast ourselves down but he cannot cast us down three she did eat when she looked perhaps she did not intend to take and when she took not eat but it ended that in that it is wisdom to stop the first motions <coughs> of sin and leave it before it mingled with us fourth she gave it also to her husband with her those that have done ill and are willing to draw in others to do the same five he did eat the intelligent the tree of life of which he was allowed to eat and eating of the tree of knowledge was forbidden Adam plainly showed a contempt of what God had bestowed on him and a desire for what God did not see fit to give him greed in other words he would have what he pleasured and do what he pleased he, his sin was in one word disobedience disobedience to a plan easy and expressing command he had no contempt no corrupt nature within to betray him but had a freedom of will in full strength not weakened or impaired he turned aside quickly he drew all his prosperity into sin and ruin who then can say that Adam's sin had but little harm in it when too late Adam and Eve saw the folly of eating the forbidden fruit they saw the happiness they fell from and the misery they were falling into they saw a loving God provoked his grace and flavor fortified see here what dishonor and trouble sin is it make mischief whenever it gets in and destroys all 
comfort. Sooner or later, it will bring shame, neither the shame of true repentance, which ends in glory, or that the shame of everlasting contempt to which the wicked shall rise that great day. See here what is commonly the folly of those that have sinned. They have more care to serve their credit before men than obtain their pardon from God. The excuses men make to cover the lesson of their sins. And vain and forbellarious like the aprons of fig leaves, they make the matter even matter never the better. Yet we all apt to cover our transgressions as Adam before they sinned, they would have welcomed God's glorious visit with humble joy. But now he has become a terror to them. The marvel that they became a terror of themselves and full of collusion and confusion. This shows the falsehood of the tempter and the frauds of his temptations. Satan promised they should be safe, but they cannot so much as think themselves so. Adam and Eve, now miserable, confronts and conforts to each other. Verses 9 to 13. Adam, where art thou? Those who by sin go astray from God should seriously consider where they are. They are afar off from good. in the midst of their enemies, in bondage to Satan, in a high road to the utter ruin. You need to understand that I'm, I'm a prime example of this. When I was in sin, I ran from God. Okay, I ran far and fast from El. Okay, but, but you can't outrun his spirit. This lost sheep had wandered without end. If the good shepherd had not sought after him and told him that where was staying, he could not either happy be enter happy or easy. If the sinners will but consider where they are, they will not rest until they return. To God, it is the common fault of the folly of those that have done ill when questioned about it to acknowledge only that which is so manifested that they cannot deny it. Like Adam, we have a reason to be afraid approaching to God. If we are not covered and clothed with the righteousness of our Messiah, sin appears mostly painful and in a glass of the commandment. Therefore, God set it before to themselves Adam and Eve excuse the sin and lay the shame and blame on others. Adam on his wife and Eve on 
said Beelzebub. There is a strange pronounce, pronouncance in those that are tempted to say they are tempted of God. And if our abuse of God's gifts would excuse our broken God laws, those who are willingly to take the pleasure and profit of sin are backward and take the blame and shame of it. Hence, that Satan's temptations are beguilings. His arguments are all the descents. His alarmments are all cheats. When he speaks fair, believe him not. It is by deceitfulness of sin of the heart is hindered. But through Satan's substillary, many draw us into sin, yet it will not justify us in sin. Though he is the tempter, we are the sinners. Let us not lessen the sorrow of sin, and we are beguiled into it. Full trick, bamboozled, whatever you want to say there, and let it increase our self in gratification that we should suffer ourselves and be deceived by our own cheat and our own sworn enemy who would destroy our souls. The sentence is passed. L begins where the sin began with the serpent. The devil's instruments must share the devil's punishment. Under the cover of the servant, the devil is sentenced to be degraded and accu accused of God. <coughs> Disdained and adorable of all mankind, also to be destroyed and ruined at last by the great Redeemer. Satisfied by the breaking of his head, war is proclaimed between the seed of the woman and the seed of the hearts of God, his people. Satan, by their corruptions, buffs them, shifts them, and seeks to devour them. Heaven and hell can never be rekindled, nor light, nor darkness, nor more can Satan and be sanctified soul. Also, there is a continual struggle between the wicked of the godly of this world. A gracious promise is here made of Christ as the deliverer of the fallen men from the power of Satan. He has the draw of the gospel day. No sooner was the wound given than the Redeemer was provided and revealed. This glorious revolution of a Savior came unasked and unlocked from Without a revolution or mercy, given some hope of forgiveness and convinced sin would sink into despair, and he hardened by faith in this promise of
our first parents. And the penance or punishment before the flood were justified and saved. Notice, is given concerning Christ. His incarnation of coming in the flesh. It speaks great encouragement into sinners that their Savior is the seed of the woman, bone of our bone. His sufferings and death pointed to Satan's bruised his heel and his human nature and Christ's sufferings are continued and the sufferings of the saints for his name. The devil attempts them, persecutes and slays them and so bruises the heel of our Messiah. So is affected in their affections. But while the heel is bruised on earth, the head is in heaven. His victory over sin, thereby Christ baffled Satan's temptations, rescued souls out of the head, out of his hand in hands. By his death, he gave the fatal blow to the devil's kingdom, a wound to the head of the serpent that cannot be healed. As the gospel gains ground, Satan falls. 16 through 19, the woman's punishment. She is condemned to the state of sorrow and subjection. Prior proper punishment of that sin in which she had sought a gratify and desire of her eye, of the flesh and her pride. Sin brought sorrow into the world and made the world a vow of tears. No wonder our sorrows are multiplied and our sins are so. He shall rule over thee, but God's commandment. Wives, be subject to your husbands. <clears throat> if men had not sinned, he would always have ruled with wisdom and love. If the woman had not sinned, she would always be, have obeyed the humanity and meekness. Adam laid the blame on his wife, but thought it was her fault to persuade him to eat the forbidden fruit. It was his fault to hearken to her, thus men's Fabulous plea will in the day of God's judgments be turned against them. God put marks of discipline on Adam. One, his inhabitants is cursed. God gave the earth to the children of men and to be comforted, comfortable dwelling. It is in now cursed for man's sin. Yet Adam is not himself cursed as the serpent was, but only the ground for his sake. He implements the enjoyments of interbitter to him labor is our duty at which we must faithfully perform it is part of men's sentence which idleness degraterity defies 
uneasiness and weariness with labor and our just punishment which we must plenty submit to since they are less than the quality deserves men's food shall become punishment to him yet men is not sentenced to eat dust as a serpent only to eat the herb of the fruit three his life also is but shortened consider how full of the trouble of his days are and his favor of him they are few yet death being dreadful to nature even when life is pleasant that concludes the punishment sin brought death into the world if Adam had not sinned he had not died he gave the way to temptation but the Savior withstood it and now admirably the satisfaction of our Messiah by his death and sufferings answer the sentence passed on the first parents did traveling pla pa pains come with sin we read the traveler of Christ's soul the plains of death was held by are so called did subjection come in with sin Christ was made under the law did the curse come with sin Christ made us curse for us he died and cursed death did thorns come with sin he was crowned with thorns for us did sweat come with sin he sweat for us and had been great drops of blood did sorrow come with sin he was a man of sorrows his soul was his agony exceeding sorrowfully did death come with sin he became obedient to death thus his plasterant as a wide as the wound blessed be God and his son are Yeshua God named man and called him Adam which sanctifies the red earth Adam named the woman and called her Eve that is life Adam bears this name of the dying body Eve is a living soul Adam probably had regard to blessing of the Redeemer the promised seed in calling his wife Eve of life he should be the life of the believer all believers and in him the families of the earth should be blessed see God's care for our first parents notwithstanding their sin clothes come in with sin little reason have to be proud of our own clothes which are but the badges of our shame when God made clothes for our first parents he made them warm and strong but coarsely 
in a very plain, not robes of scarlet, but coats of skin. <coughs> Let those that are mainly clad learn from the hence not to complain. Having food and covering, let them be content. They as well as off as Adam and Eve, and let those that are finely clad learn not to make it putting on apparel and their adorning. The beasts of those skins were closed it is supposed were slain for men's food, but for sacrifices, and triify Christ our Messiah. The great sacrifice Adam and Eve made for themselves aprons and fig leaves. a covering too narrow for them to wrap themselves in. Such are the rags of our own righteousness, but God made them coats of skin, larger, stronger, durable, and fit for them. Such is the righteousness of our Messiah. Therefore, put ye on the Lord our or El Shaddai. Verses 22 to the end. God did men go out. God told him he should no longer occupy and enjoy the garden, but men liked the place and was willing to leave it. Therefore, God made him go out. This signified the shutting out of him and all his guilt race from that communion with God, which was the bliss and glory of paradise. But men was only sent to till the ground out of which he had taken. He was sent to a place to toil, not to a place of torment. Our first parents were shut out from the privileges of their state of innocence, and they were not left to despair. The way to the tree of life was shut. It is henceforth in vain for him and his expect righteousness, life and happiness by the convenient works and the command that converted being broken. The cause of his full force, we were all by convent of works We were all undone. If we are judged by that conv convent, God revealed this to Adam, not to drive him to desire, but to quicken him to look for life and happiness in the promised seed, by whom a new living way into the holiest is laid upon for us. God always makes a way where we think there's none. He always opens a door when we think it's closed and always gives us that ability to be able to walk. In his light, 
again, praise your name, Elway. El Ashenda. If you're in the sound of my voice today and you've never accepted our Messiah as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to say this simple prayer. If you're lost and backslidden, rededicate yourself to God, to El and El Shaddai. Heavenly Abba, I come to you in prayer, asking you for forgiveness for my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Yeshua is your son, and he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and receive eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Abba, I believe that Yeshua rose from the dead and I ask him right now to come into my life and be my personal master and teacher. I repent of all of my sins and will worship him all the rest of the days of my life because your word is truth and I confess with my mouth that I am born again and am cleansed by the blood of Yeshua in Yeshua's name I pray amen now that you've said this prayer and you've dedicated your life to our Lord and Savior um, our Messiah Give that chance and so to this ministry. Um, you can reach us at the links that are on this page. May God and our El Shaddai, Elohim, and El Ananai be with you. Abba, thank you for being here with us. Bless, guide, strengthen, and keep us in all that we say and all that we do. We say these things in Yeshua's name. Amen.